Hello everyone, this is Peter from Peter and Code and today I apologize for the potato quality of the audio and video today. I am still in Nairobi, Kenya and I'm flying back on Sunday so I don't have access to my normal gear yet. But today is going to be interesting nevertheless. I'm going to talk about how to secure your live view apps. Because whatever you do, you should never trust the input that your live view receives. And if you do trust the input, somebody can really exploit the logic in your code. That sounds a bit abstract, so let me just show you an, an example project with which I will work today. Let's get started. All right, before we get started, let me introduce a little website that I find quite interesting and that also led me to this topic. And it's called tryhackme.com. So this is not a paid advertisement or anything. I just really like this website because it gives you a very interesting introduction into cybersecurity. They have a lot of topics that you can learn about if you're interested in cyber defense or if you're a complete beginner, if you want to do offensive pen testing, even study for the CompTIA test and so on. So I studied with them in the last month and I went through the, the very beginning and the, I think, offensive pen testing course so far, while well, I'm working on that at least. And it gives you quite a different perspective on web applications and software development and so on. So it's definitely worth it. It's free, but I think I pay $10 a month so that you can have more service and so on. But it's yeah, not too much to ask for the uh, breadth of wisdom and knowledge they have in here. So do try them out. I can definitely recommend them. But let's get started with today's project. It is a very simple live view app that um, only has a list of potential friends and a list of your friends. So you have a friend list to which you can add friends and remove friends from. And I will just add Paul and I can also remove Paul. I can add both of them and so on. So it's not super complicated. There is a button down here, which is disabled, and it is called destroy the system. So it might be quite a dangerous button, and I probably shouldn't uh, hit it or click it if I'm not an administrator. So I'm just a user, and luckily this one is disabled, so I can't click it, right? Well, that's the first lesson you have to learn. Anything that's in your HTML can be edited. So if I look at this button down here, I see that in the HTML it is disabled, well, let me just delete it. Oh, it's enabled now, and I can actually press it. So let's do it. Oh, no, I destroyed the entire system. Well, luckily, I can undestroy the system. So there you go. That's your first lesson. Whatever is in the HTML can be edited and will be edited by an attacker if they can. And so you have to double check in the back end whether the user that clicks the button is actually allowed to perform that action. So never trust anything that you put into the HTML and always double check in your live view and controllers and so on and even your schema models that the user is actually allowed to click this button. Right, that's the first lesson. And the second lesson is about the actions a user can perform on your website. So let's have a look at this add Paula to your friend list button. If I could get there, this one. So you see that there is a button that has a Phoenix click action, which is called add friend. And it has a parameter or a value that is just called Paula. So apparently I can set the name of the friend I want to list as the name parameter. Let's double check on this. So I go to the network here, to the network tab, and I refresh the page. And on the right side, you can see that there are two WebSockets. Excuse me. There is one WebSocket which is for the frame. So I'm in development mode and this frame reloads or hot reloads the page if I change anything. But the second WebSocket is much more interesting. It's for the socket JS here. So this is the WebSocket where all the actions are sent through to the server and the updated HTML or the updates are sent back from the server. So let's verify that. Let's click on here and we can actually see the messages that gets sent from the client to the server and back. So if I click on this button here, I see that there are two new messages. One of them is from the client to the server, and it has just an array of data. And the first element here is the join reference. I don't really know what that means, but it's a join reference, whatever. The second parameter is the reference for that particular message. 
So you can see that the first message that I can see here has the value four, then it has five, six, and seven. So this is actually a counter that the socket holds to verify that the socket receives every single message and that there's not a message lost. So this is just a sequence number, basically. Then you have the topic, which is unique for this particular live view. And then it has the type of event, or basically it says there is an event. And the payload of that is there is an event, which is called add friend, and it's a click event. And the value that was sent with that event is the name uh, Paula and some other thing. But this is actually the, the payload, so to say, of that event. So maybe maybe I can change that, that, that parameter. And if I change it to another friend, maybe I can add a friend that is not in this list of potential friends. Right. So I cannot do that in the network here in the network tab. It will not let me like send messages manually, but there is an application that is recommended by the tryhackme.com website and it's called Burp Suite. Burp Suite is a very handy tool if you want to intercept any HTML WebSocket communication between a client and a server. And there are so many other use cases that I really haven't gotten into yet. But let's just focus on this use case first. So I started the Burp Suite. I do. I create a temporary project. I just load the defaults, and I'm starting it. It's Java, so it takes a while to start. So this is a dashboard that you will see if you open the Burp Suite. But let's first go to the proxy tab, uh, tab over here. And what you can see is that there is an open browser button here. So this actually starts, if I click it, this starts an integrated browser. So whatever I do through this browser now gets locked or gets intercepted by the Burp Suite. So let's test this out. If I go to my local 4000, you see that it's actually intercepting the GET request here. And I can forward that request so I can allow it to continue. And I can also see the response from there and so on. Oh, so that's actually the second GET request for the live reload. I'm also going to allow that for the WebSocket and again for the live reload and so on. So actually you saw the first, the first static rendering and then you saw the dynamic rendering uh, of the live view website and so on. But if I don't want to intercept every single request, I can just click this button here, which uh, lets me turn off the interception. So the website will just work uh, as, as it should. So if I reload it, everything works. I don't have to press any buttons here. Nothing is intercepted. But let's go to the WebSockets history here. And as we can see, the website has actually sent quite a lot of information already or messages to the server and back. And if we click on this one here, we can actually see that uh, the client received from the server the updates to render. And also there are some uh, live, be live uh, heartbeat messages here. Yeah, so the server, so the client sends a heartbeat to the server and the server responds with, I'm still okay. We have seen that there is a message sent from the client to the server and it is a event and the payload is it's a click event. The action is add friend, actually. Yes, now you can read it better. It's called add friend and the value is name Paul. All right, now we have seen that this message is sent from the client to the server. So we want to modify it a bit. For that, I will use this WebSocket. I'll right click on it and I will say send to repeater. And you see that this is a little bit red here, a little bit orange. And as you can see, the message was preloaded here. And I can say whether I want to send a new message to the server or the client. So let's do the following. Let me just have a look at the latest message that was sent. It is the, uh, the heartbeat, which is the seven. So I go here and I increase the message by one, add. Uh, eight, and I change the name parameter to Bob. So I can 
now I want to add a friend that is called Bob, but it's not in my potential friends list. So let's see whether that works. Oh, actually, sorry. The latest uh, message here, as you can see, is 11. So let's just make it 12. And we send it. So as you can see, this is a message I've sent manually. And it also has a manual tick mark here. And the message had also the same at friend action, but it had a value of Bob in here. And I also got a, a response back, which is actually an updated version of the friends list. So apparently it worked, but I can't see it here because I don't know why, but this here doesn't automatically update. I think it is because the socket here does not expect to receive a message from the server because it hasn't sent a message itself, but we sent that message actually. So that's why I guess the rendering, the re-rendering doesn't work. But if I refresh the page, we see that magically Bob was added to our friends list. Very interesting. All right, and this actually shows that we can modify the messages as we want. So what you have to do is you have to always double check in your live view that the values you get in and the actions you get in are valid, whatever that means to your application. All right, before I show you how to secure your live view, let's do one more thing. And that is the destroy the system button that you can see here in the HTML. Because let's say that this button does not exist in the HTML. So I can actually not see it as a user. But I know that there is an action called destroy or something similar. And I just want to try it. I just want to send a message manually to the server without triggering anything in my HTML. Well, I can do that through Burp Suite as well. The first thing we need to do is we need to find the latest WebSocket because I reloaded the website and the WebSocket that I used here got uh, terminated and disconnected basically. So let's just do everything new. I reload the website. I go to proxy over here. I go to the latest messages and I just select the live WebSocket. WebSocket. I send it to the repeater and there we go. I just want to press this button to get the proper the proper topic and everything here. And now I have uh, a message I can manipulate however I want. So what I want to do is I want to change the remove friend action to destroy. And the value, well, I can re remove this, but it won't really matter because in this case, we do not pattern match against the parameters for that destroy action. The parameters just get ignored. But for uh, completeness sake, I remove the extra parameter, I change the action to destroy, and I can send it to the server. Boom. Now we see on the right side, the list of messages sent through this, uh, through this web socket. And we can see that, yeah, we sent the actual destroy action, and we got a message back from the server that is uh, that shows an updated HTML. Like these are the updates that MorphDOM should now show on the website. But as I said, for whatever reason, the reloading doesn't work in this browser. So let me just refresh the page and we see that we actually destroyed the system. Yeah, so we destroyed the system just by changing the messages here. As you can see, it is very dangerous to assume that whatever you receive in your live view was actually triggered by a legit user. Because as you, as, as you have seen here, it is super easy to write your own messages and to just send something to the server without triggering anything in the HTML, in the actual website. So then let me show you how to secure against such attacks. I will go to the code here. And as you can see, that's a very simple live view that only receives a couple of events here at add friend, remove friend, destroy, and undestroy. And I use a agent as just keeping the states here. The first thing we want to do is for the add friend and remove friend side, we want to check that the name is actually within a certain, uh, is actually within an allowed list of values. So what we could do is right here, we could fetch a list of allowed friends or something. Uh, let's just, but I will, I will do something more static now for, for uh, 
just demonstration sakes. So I will say allowed friends, or let's say valid potential friend list. And in here, I will put Paul and I will put the name Paula. Okay, so whenever we receive the handle event message, we want to check that what we actually receive as a name here is in this list of potential friends. So in that case, we can just do case name in this. And if it is, then we actually do all this stuff. And if it isn't, then in this case, I will not show an error, but usually would show an error, but we just, we just ignore it for now. So now if I go back to my website here and I use the latest WebSocket there. Okay, let me just delete all this. I will add this one. Right, and now we want to do add friend and we want to add Bob again. Send it. Oh, sorry, I have to send it to the server. Send it, and we see that nothing changed in the, so this is the response from the server, and there is no update whatsoever in the UI. So it just ignored the message, basically. If I re uh, refresh the website here, we see that nothing has changed. So that works. I will, yeah, In for the remove friends, you could just check that the name is actually in the list of the current friends, and some other checks. And for the destroy events handler, you would need to have a yeah the user struct here where you can just do something like case user is admin, oh sorry admin like this, uh, and if it is, then you do the uh, all that stuff, and if it isn't, then you just ignore the message again. But yeah, as I said, there is no user admin struct in here, so you would need to get it. Um, from if you mount your live view, you would probably get a like a user UI from here. And with that one, you would get a user from like a user repo or something and assign that to the socket. Right. And then you could get it here again, like this. Okay, but yeah, the problem is I don't have any user repo here. It's it's not there, but this is something you should do if you implement your live view. And yeah, whenever the, the user uh, does something on your on your live view, always, you know, never, never assume that it's a legit, or never trust the action and the parameters you receive. Always double check that the parameters are valid and that the action can be executed by the user. All right, so I hope you enjoyed this little presentation of cybersecurity in live view apps and so on. I hope you understand now why it is important to never trust anything the user sends you from the live view and always double check in the live view itself. Because as you've seen, it just takes a couple of clicks to change the message to whatever the user wants to. I hope you find this video interesting. I know that I haven't uploaded a lot in the while. I just do these kind of videos whenever I feel like it. You know, I also have a life and a job and so on. But if you have any topics that you would like me to cover, please reach out on Twitter. My handle is PJ Ulrich, U-L-L-R-I-C-H. If you enjoyed this video, maybe hit the subscribe and like button. As I said, I'm not super active on YouTube, but every now and then I push out a new video. So if you want to get notified about it, press the subscribe or whatever button. I hope you enjoyed it. Have a great day and I'll see you in the next one. Cheers.